Welcome. You're listening to the Leading Hope Podcast. My name is VJ Williams here with my friend and pastor, Kevin Jack. Thank you for joining us, taking time out of your day to become a better leader. We release a new episode every Wednesday. We'd love for you to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Also share this with a friend on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, invite them into the conversation and that's actually where we're going to start today we continue the series of seven conversations seven conversations about the top seven leadership lessons um from pastor kevin uh which is exciting last week was episode 200 today is 200 201 it's our fifth Fifth. Conversation out of seven. I've enjoyed this series. This is fun. This is different. Yeah. Whole different look and feel. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. It's been. I don't know if we'll continue this, but it'll be interesting. Yeah. But let's it's, see. It's fun. Um, you're on your fifth conversation today. Yeah. So, uh, just like big idea okay. from the start, right. not like long story. Everything else, and that's the idea that uh, coming out hot. Building is a completely different skill set the maintaining oh yeah and the idea oh, cool. that people think and i think the i i, I want to use the language uh for this conversation on building and maintaining because people typically talk about it as leader versus manager and i think the issue with that distinction is that there's so many skill sets that are transferable like to know when am I leading? When am I managing? When am I doing that? I don't think that's always the most helpful dichotomy to yeah. create of those two. But the difference between like I am maintaining what is, I'm keeping it moving, like things are still working versus learning how to build something and to grow it and to develop it over time. Uh, just the realization for me is just to go, these are two completely different skill sets. And most people think they're builders when all they've ever really done is maintain it's really good uh there are it, i mean you look at people like actually building like yeah actual building yep like they 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 don't really maintain anything they just Correct. build another thing yep and i don't know if that's what you're talking you about. have a different an entirely different group of people to build the structure than you have to come in and do maintenance. Yeah. Not, uh, this is not a belittling of maintenance not at in all. any way, but it's an acknowledgement of just to say, maintain does not necessarily transfer to build. Yeah. And people think that, Oh, I've led at this position or I've led at this level. And I was just going to be like, well, have you built anything? Yeah. Or have you just kept going what you inherited? And it may be, and I, I think the difficulty on it is like, you can grow it and not be the one who built it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can, you can grow something because the pieces were already in place and momentum was already moving. And so all you had to do was just scale systems. Yeah. which is not complex to go. This is what works at 500 people. This is what works at 800 people. Now this is what works at a thousand. Like you can scale systems and yet not have the skill set of knowing how to build something to begin with. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's go that route. Yeah. Um, that seems even in that dichotomy, there's a little bit of difference because uh, to, to come up with the plan to scale like at 500 here yeah. at 1000, you can do that, but you still have to grow it yep. to get it to that. So those yep. are two different is, are you talking about that in, in this um, leadership lesson? Well, what are we like, cause that's, those are, that's like, I can tell you, I mean, I can come up with a plan right now in 15 minutes and tell you how we can go from 500,000 on a system, yep. but the people, and the things and the pro like all the equipment all the all that has to be part of that equation that's a whole different skill set i i think this is uh if we're going to get into like the nitty gritty of what one is and what it isn't, we have to connect it in some way to the first lesson on the, you have to commit to be there for the long haul. Yeah. Because you, I, I believe that you can be in a position for a couple years and see growth and still not have the skill set of building. Yeah, of course. And so I think people think like, Oh, I, I took it church wise. 500 to 600 people over four years. It's like, okay. It was growing at a faster pace when you got there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or maybe the church down the street had a crisis and 300 people came over, but 
you grew by a hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's true of business as well. It's just like, well, I did this and this. It's like that doesn't mean you know how to build. Yeah. So what what really constitute uh, whether you are actually a builder or not a builder? Because I mean, like, doesn't matter who in the White House is; they're growing the deficit every year. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter. You build that. <laughs> yeah, you, you're, you're a deficit builder every year. Doesn't matter if you're right wing, left wing, or in between. That's a conversation be, we should not head down. Be, for well, I mean, but but I'm but said seriously, they're they're building all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Right. Like, so, I mean, the deficit is growing. They're growing yeah. something. I, I think mean, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be a helpful piece of this conversation. No, but my concept is how do you going back? How do you know if you're at, it does, it is helpful because how do we know what's, how do we know if they're actually building something versus maintaining it? Um, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. I think that's the issue there. Yeah. Well, like, I don't know how to answer how you know that you're building or how you know that you're maintaining because I think people who build see things differently. And so from the outside looking in, you may not know the difference uh, from a from a personal level. I, from a personal level, I think everyone thinks they're a builder. Yeah. Yeah, I know how to build this. Yeah. Yeah, I know how to build this. And the reality is, is just that, not that people can't learn that skill set, not that they can't acquire that skill set, but that doesn't mean it's innate and it doesn't mean it's how they currently think. Yeah. What what would you want them to learn from this lesson? Um, things I find. I find uh, builders are not worried about efficiency. They're obsessed about effectiveness. efficiency is not the so outcome over cost yes at least initially now there comes a time where efficiency has to enter into the equation but there's so many people they're not willing to start new because of the like your systems get refined over time oh yeah they don't start refined if they do then that'd be uh yep that's a yeah that's a rare thing but like the builder is not intimidated by inefficiency yeah they're afraid of missing out on effectiveness and so to go like hey we're gonna try like church world we're gonna try this thing we're gonna try this event the person who is the main maintainer the first thing in their head will be the amount of work that oh. that will take there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. The builder, the thing that it will hit them first, like the amount of work is the last thing in their thought process. The first thing is always the potential impact that it'll have. I'm with you right away now. I cool. mean, that makes sense. So that, I mean, let's, let's just stay on that. How do we, cause I mean, we're not trying to say that maintaining is bad. I mean, we're definitely not saying that we're saying, Correct. we're saying that can't grow something. Correct. And if you think you, I, I think the thing that I want, why this lesson is so important is like, if you think you know how to build, but you only know how to maintain, you will be frustrated because what is actually limiting you are your, are your thinking patterns Yeah, more than it. I, I think another big one that characterizes builders first maintainers is, uh, uh, I use common terminology, but like uh, maintainers are afraid of failure. Yeah. Builders are afraid of missing out. I, th I think the key piece on there is builders. Uh, builders are excited about the potential for risk. And I know that sounds ridiculous because I've, I've heard people talking to me like no one likes risk. No one, no one enjoys risk. No, it'll be like lies. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm thrilled by it. Yeah. Like people are like, Hey, we're going to try this and it might not work because the presence of risk means you're entering into uncharted territory. Do you equate risk to the hard work at some point? Like it's going to like, it, like risk is also a cost or it's just this might or a failure. Uh, just to be helpful here, like only in the concept of failure. Okay. Like, Hey, this might not work. This might not go well. We might look dumb doing this. Yeah. It may flop. Yeah. And I, I just like, and I say this seriously, I want to repeat that. Like I've heard people say no one likes risk 
And what, what I thought in my head was that's a maintainer who's saying that. Yeah, of course. Because they don't understand there are people who are actually like it, it gets their adrenaline going <laughs> yeah. whenever risk is present because the thing that's in their head is not potential failure. The thing that's in their head is uncharted territory that is a huge opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And I, I that happens a lot. Um, but I think even more <laughs> is, is, oh, that's, that's going to be a, that's going to be really hard work. Yeah. Uh, which is, I can spot the maintainer really quickly just based off of that. Because, um, just to give you an example, here we go. Um, we, I was in a meeting recently and, uh, we're talking about the challenge that we're currently in as yeah. we speak. It's an incredible invite challenge. It's not, it's not easy. This Correct. is a very difficult thing. And we're talking about how we're going to celebrate it and stuff. And uh, the thing that we're actually going to do is going to be a lot of work. But a lot of people, when they first found out about that, this is what we're going to do. We're like, wow. Yeah. How? Like, you know, man, I might, might miss a lunch. You know, <laughs> what I mean? you know what I mean? I know that sounds yeah. ridiculous, but like, it's a lot of work, right? Uh, and I'm not going to give away what we're doing because um, it hasn't happened yet. Um, it won't be by the time this is out. Uh, but like it is a lot of work and it's individualistic. It's a customized individual thing yeah. per person, per capita of the entire organization that for people who opted in. Yep. It, it's per person customized. It's okay. not a one size. So what did you say? It's, it's going to be, I believe it's a risk. But it's. I think it's going to be super effective. It is. It is so far from being efficient yeah. that I could ever imagine. This is. This is the opposite of efficiency. Yep. Like most people want to say, "Hey, what can I create? One that will land on a thousand people's, you know, phones." Mm -hmm. Right. This is not that. But it's going to be really effective when someone gets this personalized thing. Yeah. That's that's the what I see from a maintainer versus builder, which is people will go to. Man, that's going to be a lot of work. And I think, um, I don't know how to say this without being highly offensive. <laughs> that's, that's not my highly. goal. Dude, is there a mildly offensive? That's not my goal. <laughs> I think anyone can learn to be a builder. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not trying to praise that skill set over the maintaining skill set. Okay. Yeah. That's not. But it's, it sounds like what we're what we're saying. Though. Yeah. That's not my goal, though. I'm right. not trying to say like the builder is a better skill set than the maintainer. I think the trap comes in is people maintain something, think they're a builder, and then don't know why things aren't growing or things aren't moving in a better direction, or they might even take a position that requires them to build and they will be perpetually frustrated by it. Yeah. So, um, for sure. All right. So let me, so now let me get offensive. Yeah. Cool. And I, we've had this conversation with our team here. Okay. So I'm not having a conversation with anyone that I haven't already had with our team. Okay. And that's to say like the difficulty of large churches is there are people in those large churches on those staffs who should be sent out to go do significant things for the kingdom, but they don't want to because it would require less pay and more work than what they're already doing. Yeah. And they have sat in a maintained job under someone else's leadership for a while. And when faced with the prospect of building something, their immediate thought is, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Without all my friends, I don't want to go do that. Yeah. And I, I think what has to happen for the, what I really care about, what has to happen for the kingdom of God to continue to advance is people have to be willing to take the risk and make the shift to become builders when all they've ever known is being maintainers. Yeah. That's good. That's powerful. And hard and e good. Email us if you're ticked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, Jack, I'm just, um, yeah. <laughs> the, I'm just, I, I'm now I'm thinking about this in a different light as well, because I, I think all builders and I could be wrong here. I, you know, I think all builders need to be good at maintaining as well though. 
That's uh, uh, no, I, I agree. Do you know what I mean? And, I, I'm, and I'm I think really ma- maintainers should become great builders so they can learn to be better maintainers. And so, like, Does that makes sense. So let's. Uh, so terms we're not saying. Yeah, we're not saying dreamer. Yeah, we're saying builder. Yeah, dreamer skill set worthless. Yeah. Anyone can do it. Yeah. To, like, Explain what you mean by that, because someone might take I have that, an idea. They would get highly offensive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because they say I'm a dreamer. Right. Uh, John Lennon is yeah. so upset right yeah, now. And he's not the only one mm-hmm. who's upset. No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so, like, like, the person who thinks that their idea is the thing that's significant is... I don't, I don't have words Yeah, because like the idea is not what's significant. It is the execution of the idea that matters. That. It's not that, Oh, I had this great idea. Oh, they took my idea. Oh, did you see that thing? That was my idea. It's yeah. just like, yeah, shut up. Yeah. The skill set is enacting it. Yeah. The skill set is in bringing it yeah. to life. That's a piece of a puzzle. Small, small piece. Yeah. And That's so good. like sometimes people are like, I've got this business idea. <laughs> great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go, yeah. go sell it to someone. Yeah. It's more likely to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I, I just want to be cautious on this because I think what you said was so good. Yeah. I don't want people to feel like, Oh, I'm just a maintainer. I stink. Right. Maintaining no. is a skill set that is valuable, super valuable, but like, but it is true. I think I'm maybe counteracting words that I said earlier because I didn't have the courage to just maybe fully fess up to it. Yeah. Building is a higher skill set than maintaining. Yeah. Building course. is a more significant skill set. Yeah. And if if you're afraid of risk, if you're only focused on efficiency, if you're not willing to step out, you're not a builder. Right. And, and maybe the call within this is to go, you can become a builder. Absolutely. You can do stuff that matters if you already have the skill set of maintaining, but it requires you to go against some things that maybe got you to where you are. Yeah. I am I am more convinced now than any part of my life that anybody, and I truly believe this, anybody can step out of what their current role is and yeah. create something. Yes. Now, it might not be the greatest thing in the world. It might not even be something useful to most people. But you can still create it, which is part of being a builder. You can see it through. You can execute, and it can be available to people. Yep. Everybody. I don't know anybody that can't do that. Now, most people want to be comfortable enough to just have what's been created and use that yeah. to get by. Yep. And I see it over and yep. over again. And that's, I think that's what we're kind of saying is that, you know, and I would also say that I would like to see people who build all the time actually stick around to see it be finished every once exactly. in a while. Exactly. Exactly. Which is the maintenance. That piece, is important. Right? Like, hey, after you said you built something, which you didn't really build, you just kind of said you built it, and then you watched someone else do all the work to finish it, yep. and you weren't there to help out or guide or lead, I don't, I don't like that either. Correct. Just being fair. Correct. No, so, no, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you entirely. Cool. You got two minutes to sum up uh, builders and maintainers. Uh, so I think my hope from this conversation is that my desire of possibly offending a whole lot of people and ticking other people off and frustrating people is that the next time that you hear an idea or you get a thought of an initiative, an event, a program, something like that, and the first thing in your head is, that's a lot of work. I want you to finish that sentence with, it's probably worth it. That's great. And and if we could get that, like I say, all 201 of the 201 of these episodes have been worth it just for that moment for someone to move to go. It's going to be a lot of work. A I'm going to be exhausted. I'm going to lose some sleep. Yep. It'll cost me time. Always. But it's probably worth it. Probably worth it. Is that the name of this episode? Yeah, let's do that. It's probably worth it. It's probably worth it. Thank you for joining us, taking time out of your day to become a better leader. Uh, Man, uh, episode 201 in our fifth conversation of seven top seven leadership lessons with Pastor Kevin. Uh, We're so glad that you're here learning to become a better leader like we're trying to become a a better leader. Uh, Make sure you share this with a friend. Um, Maybe just text them. Send it to them. DM us if you have questions. Uh, Maybe this episode got you thinking in ways that you never thought before. Or maybe you are like, man, I don't like what they said. Let us know. 
we want to hear from you because we think it's important to move this conversation forward so that we can all get better together. And uh, that's the whole goal of this, this whole podcast is that we're moving the mission forward together. Uh, So thank you for joining us. And remember, everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Woo!